Hello, my name is Joe and welcome to this tutorial about how to create a fixed camera system like in the Resident Evil PS1 games. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is open up our package manager and install the Cinemachine package. This is a package which adds a lot of camera functionality to Unity and it's going to be the only package that we're needing for this tutorial today. The next thing we're going to do is create a really quick test scene to demonstrate our fixed camera system. I'm going to do this just by using some cubes, then scaling and rotating them to create a small angled corridor. We're also going to want a representation for our player. So we're going to create a small capsule bean, and just to make sure we can tell which direction he's facing, we're going to create a small cube on his face and apply a black material, which is gonna make, uh, make it look like he's got some cool looking shades, but more importantly, so that we can tell which direction he is looking forwards in. So this fixed camera system will work with any movement code, as long as your player character has a transform component. For this demo, I'm just going to be using a script that emulates tank controls, similar to the older Resident Evil titles. Essentially, this means that when I press forward, I'm always going to be moving in the direction that my character is facing. I find this works best when working with a fixed camera system, as it becomes much easier to orient your character when the camera switches to a new angle. If you were to use code to move your character dependent on the camera's angle, this can lead to you quickly exiting a room which you just entered, as the direction that you are holding is now pointing in the opposite direction. I'll provide a link to this code in the description below. Now that we've got our movement code, I'm going to add a character controller component to our bean, as the script needs this component to be able to move around. And just testing it out, you can see what I was describing earlier where pressing forward will only ever move the player in the direction they're facing. This is going to be very useful when we start to implement camera switching. So let's start creating the system for our fixed cameras. Just before we start that, I am going to change my level geometry to black, just to help our player bean stand out against the background a bit more. We're going to right click in the hierarchy and create an empty object which we call the trigger zone. Let's reset this transform and add a box collider component. This box collider is going to define the areas which our cameras will be looking at. When a player moves from one box to another is when the camera switch will take place. When setting these colliders up, I like to go into the orthographic view as it lets me see exactly where the boundaries are going to be. For this simple example on the corner, it doesn't matter much, but it might in your game if the geometry becomes more complex. Once we've got this set up, I'm just going to duplicate it and shift it to a different position around the corner. So now we have our two zones, let's add our cameras. Click the Cinemachine drop down at the top and add a virtual camera to get one in your scene. Now I'm going to teach you some hidden tech which I don't see mentioned too often in other tutorials. Click the solo button on the Cinemachine component and position your scene view roughly where you'd like your camera to be set up. Then hit Ctrl, Shift and F to align the camera to your scene view. You can see the camera is now looking at where we were positioned in the scene view. Let's duplicate this camera and set it up where we want it for the other zone using the same Control shift and f method for easy placement. Do note, it's important that you hit the solo button when working with multiple cameras, so you only affect the one you have selected. Now, we can reorganise our hierarchy just to make things clearer for ourselves when we go to the next step. Let's create a second script called Cam Switcher and open this up in our editor. The first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we're using the Cinemachine namespace so we can access Cinemachine functions. But we're also going to want to create some variables. We want a reference to our player's transform component, and we also want a reference to a Cinemachine virtual camera component, which we'll call our active cam. 
we can go ahead and get rid of the start and update functions, as we won't be needing them for this script. What we want to know is when our player enters and exits a box collider, as this is how we'll be swapping out cameras. So let's create an onTrigger enter function where we are detecting if the tag is equal to the player, and an onTrigger exit function with the same parameters. We can then say if we enter a box and the tag is equal to the player, we're going to set our active cam priority to be 1, and then when the player exits, we'll set the priority back down to 0. And that's it, but we do need to do a small bit of admin just to make sure everything functions correctly. Let's make sure our trigger zone colliders are set to be triggers, and add the cam switcher script to these game objects. In these scripts, make sure that we're referencing the player for the player transform. Then, drill down into each zone and make sure each collider is associated with the correct camera. The last thing we'll do is we'll make sure our player bean has the tag of player, as this is what each trigger zone needs to enable the camera switch. And it's done! A super simple way to set up a fixed camera system. Just to give you an idea of how this can work in a project, here's a small demo from something that I'm making where I use this exact system to achieve a fixed camera setup. Let me know if you'd like me to make a video on this game in the future. Five minutes. Detecting collision with nearby celestial body. Estimating time before vessel reaches critical temperature. Five minutes. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It is super simple. I'm sure there are uh, many more complex ways to do this, but I find this way is really simple and really effective. So let me know if you liked it. Uh, if you want to have more game dev stuff, then please subscribe or ring the bell, do all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. I've uh, been very busy moving house and all other sorts of things, moving jobs. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you want to see any more content, um, and I'll see you next time. Peace.